here are some of the nastiest dishes to have ever been served on MasterChef. And this one has a strong argument for being the absolute worst. In Season 4, Episode 4, a culinary catastrophe of epic proportions unfolded after the mystery box challenge was revealed. The contestants were thrown into the elimination round, tasked with mastering the delicate langoustine in just 60 minutes. Enter Howard, who decided to go big or go home he dropped a citrus salad bomb with what he called a champion vinaigrette. Well, let's see how that goes for you, champ. Ramsay absolutely tore into Howard's dish, suggesting he should have ditched half the plate and those three lemon slices. Made a citrus salad with a champion vinaigrette, diced mangoes. But here's the real kicker. Howard was actually proud of his creation. Claiming it was the judges, though, weren't having it. Ramsay asked if there was any vinaigrette on the plate at all, saying all he could see was regret. To add insult to injury, Joe and Aaron confirmed there was zero vinegar in the dish. Talk about a sour ending. I don't know what to say. You know I'm not a rabbit. Ramsay was not having it. He declared the dish a complete joke and flat out refused to even taste it. You've got to see his reaction. You know, this is a waste of our time. As one viewer put it, Howard really messed up big time. Honestly, there's not much more to say than that. It's just plain and simple. Meanwhile, Joe didn't hold back either, as expected. He laid it all out, telling Howard that he'd vouched for him, hyped up his skills, and now he was dealing with the letdown of the season. Joe even floated the idea of kicking Howard off the show, practically offering him a mercy exit. But nope, that didn't happen, at least not in this episode. The judges decided to give him another chance or five before finally showing him the door. But not all viewers were thrilled with this decision. Many called out the show for making biased choices. MasterChef waits for no one, especially not for subpar vinaigrettes and questionable citrus salads. Curious about those other episodes he was in? Well, all you have to do is just keep an eye out on the channel, and I'll be back with more Howard drama sooner, rather than later. For now though, it's clear he needed more time and a lot of practice to sharpen his skills. I throw you out. And how if you're having a tough up next we're about to witness a real kitchen disaster from season two this time the spotlight was on angel a contestant totally flopping with french cuisine talk about a major bummer for an aspiring chef really don't want to go home i cannot let the french win this war angel was totally nervous as she laid out her dish clearly lacking confidence and boy she had every reason to be jittery back there it, it didn't do well the burning question was on Aaron's mind. Why was Angel so down in the dumps? Angel didn't hold back her thoughts. Uh, back there, it, it didn't do well. Aaron decided to dig deeper, asking what exactly Angel had whipped up. Angel could barely mumble her reply, but turns out Angel had left it back at her table because it didn't meet her standards. With the main piece absconding, Aaron was left speechless. See, the tart speaks for itself, so I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Sorry, Angel. Aaron swapped spots with Ramsey, ready to give it a taste, but Angel cut in with something she really shouldn't have said. I already know it's a disaster. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Talk about a facepalm moment. It was like she was asking for trouble and she got it. Ramsey's next words were savage. It's like the kind of dessert that give you for a month. But then, in a surprising twist, Ramsey showed a softer side. He felt bad for Angel, knowing she had more potential than what she showed. I'm more embarrassed for you, because I think deep down inside, you can do a lot better. Still, the verdict was in. By the end of the round, Angel's journey in the MasterChef kitchen was over. America, I cannot cook French food. Season 3 brought us a challenge in episode 10 that was meant to separate the kitchen pros from the novices. And boy, did it deliver. Pizza seems easy, right? But nailing it? That's a whole different slice of pie. Enter Mike, hopeful but not exactly beaming with pride over what he brought to the table. As he presented his masterpiece, the judges weren't exactly throwing a pizza party. And then, Mike let slip something that was sure to stir the pot. To have given you a pizza. Really? 
if you... Aaron commented that Mike managed to make his dish look as dry as the Sahara. It was basically a polite way of saying Mike should pack up and go. What piece of equipment you were given to cook with? But Mike wasn't ready to throw in the towel. He tried to explain his memory lapse, but Ramsey wasn't buying it. No excuse, it just did, Chef. This is your worst performance. Mike's excuses fell flatter than weak old dough. And then, in a moment I still can't wrap my head around, Mike confessed he'd completely zoned out during the cook. The judges were stone cold on this one. Just one look at Joe's face told you everything. A dough recipe of any kind? I just drew a blank. Yeast, flour. By the end of the tasting, Mike had pretty much come to terms with it. Worse than I did. Sure, he was hoping someone, anyone, would mess up worse than him. But seriously, who else could manage to bake a pizza that dry? Can't think of anyone. In the end, the verdict was crystal clear. Mike's pizza stone experiment flopped. It's time for you to head back. Georgia, your time is done in master. Oh, chef. But not everyone was cheering the decision. After all, his dish ended up in the trash. Here's my two cents. Mike may not have been the MVP of the season, but he definitely deserved a shot at redemption. There's a sneaky suspicion that there's more to his cooking than just that desert dry pizza. Now brace yourself for a dish that'll flip your culinary world upside down. What in the f is that? So, Tommy stepped up to the plate in front of the judges, ready to showcase his latest creation. But hold up, let's set the scene straight first. Tommy wasn't just known for his cooking chops, but also for his killer fashion sense. Man of fashion. A man of art, style, panache. He brought his A-game with a dish that blended his favorite flavors, green tea, pistachios, and orange zest. What have you done? I really wanted to do something with green tea. I love the color. Everyone held their breath to see if this bold mix would wow the judges. Would Tommy's risky dish hit the jackpot or fall flat? The tension was thick as he played it up, hoping his gamble would pay off. Now I've heard of a sick bag, but that's the first for me, a sick box. Tommy painted a picture of vibrant green tea, nutty pistachios, and zesty orange creating a flavor symphony. Together would create a symphony for your mouth. He aimed for a dish that would tantalize the senses, turning everyday ingredients into something extraordinary. But when the judges unveiled his creation, it was clear they weren't impressed. Eating a tuxedo. I know, You're chef. saying it's number two and... One mouth for that, and I'm sure I'll be going. Their expressions ranged from confusion to low-key disgust. In other words, Tommy's dish was a major letdown. Instead of a culinary masterpiece, it looked more like a messy heap of leftovers. There was zero elegance or finesse, far from what you'd expect on MasterChef. I'm shocked. I honestly don't know how you got there. It's not my bad. Tommy was visibly crushed. This wasn't the outcome he envisioned. He tried to keep his composure, but when he humorously described his dish as looking more like a sick box than haute cuisine, it didn't lighten the mood. I always try to take something ordinary and change it into something grand. Props to him for being real, though. Maybe he deserves a bit of slack for owning up to his flop. But the judges weren't amused. Chef Ramsay wasted no time ripping into the dish, even joking it needed a warning label for daylight viewing. To come with a, a health warning. Tommy hoped for some positive feedback despite the obvious flaws in presentation, but Ramsay wasn't about to sugarcoat his critique. The atmosphere grew tense as Tommy absorbed the harsh feedback, each comment cutting deeper. Do not open in broad daylight. Sure, there were some decent flavors in there, but overall, the verdict was a thumbs down. The textures were off, and the flavor combo didn't sing like Tommy had hoped. There are bits in there that taste decent, but... In one word, it was embarrassing. Tommy felt the weight of failure as the judges delivered their verdict. A tough lesson in matching ambition with execution. As the tasting wrapped up, Tommy stood in the MasterChef kitchen, grappling with the sting of defeat. Tommy's grand vision didn't quite pan out, and he found himself the butt of jokes. While he tried to keep a brave face, Katrina couldn't help but chuckle at the whole debacle. And Katrina is laughing at me. Now let's talk about these two. Tommy and Katrina, they clash like oil and water, always at odds for reasons even they couldn't explain. It was like they were born arch rivals. I have never been more embarrassed, and here I am. Poor Tommy, 
usually so confident and stylish, ended up feeling like a total goofball. His day in the kitchen was rough, to say the least. He realized he got too caught up in his grand ideas and forgot the basics. Sometimes, simpler is better in cooking. Sure, his dish looked impressive, but the taste? Not so much. It was a wake-up call for Tommy, reminding him that mastering the basics is key. Despite the disappointment, Tommy saw it as a learning experience. Every top chef hits bumps, right? He took it in stride, determined to bounce back stronger. And here I am in the MasterChef kitchen, looking like a straight up fool. As the day wrapped up, Tommy left the kitchen, feeling a mix of shame and determination to redeem himself next time. But man, I've never seen him crack under pressure like this before. Speaking of pressure cookers, here's another contestant whose creativity took a nosedive under the intense kitchen heat. Diamond. Hi, Chef. Describe your sausage, please. Diamond had high hopes for her dish, but unfortunately, it didn't sparkle like a diamond or like rough gravel. She went for a chicken and Asiago cheese sausage, topped with a quick bruschetta mix of tomatoes, garlic, basil, salt, and pepper. I made a chicken and Asiago cheese sausage. To jazz it up, she threw in a Parmesan crisp and fried basil for that extra flair. And I garnished it with a little bit of Parmesan crisp. Diamond boasted about using chicken thighs and skin for flavor, but the judges were skeptical, especially about that Parmesan crisp. It looked good, but did it really add to the dish? Quite bright. Not too sure about the Parmesan crisp. Then the judging took a sharp turn for the worse. That doesn't look like it's cooked. The judges honed in on the sausage's taste and texture, essential for any sausage worth its salt. And let's just say, what they found inside wasn't gold. It was more like a culinary disaster waiting to happen from the moment it hit the plate. Diamond got the message loud and clear from the judges. Her heart sank. Despite her hard work, one mistake threatened to derail her entire journey. Mm, I'm sorry about that. Back at her station, she faced the harsh reality. Serving up undercooked chicken sausage wasn't just a slip up, it was a recipe for disaster. Worst possible thing that could have happened. Reflecting on the experience, Diamond realized she had aimed high but missed the mark. Her attempt to innovate with chicken thigh and skin backfired when the basics weren't nailed down. I can't eat that. In a competition where every second counts, she learned a tough lesson about execution. Oh, sausage, like, that's it. That's the end. There's no if, ands, or buts. I'm going. As she stood there, disappointment and frustration mingled with the sense that this mistake could cost her everything. But that's not all. Let's talk about Lindsay now. Lindsay strutted up, proud as a peacock, ready to wow the judges. Her dish? A lamb and beef Salisbury steak with a porcini mushroom crust, topped with roasted mushrooms and a fresh salad with blanched green beans. <sighs> the judges are gonna love it. Right, Lindsay. Yes. It sounded like a winner, right? The presentation was on point. Salisbury steak shaped to perfection, a crusty mushroom topping, and a vibrant side salad. Green beans. When Chef Ramsay took a bite, his face said it all. And trust me, it wasn't a smile. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. That meat is disgusting. The meat was dry, the porcini crust was utterly chewy, and even the mushrooms on top had their issues. Duck in the oven. There's no color on those things. From start to finish, Lindsay's dish failed to impress, plain and simple. But she wasn't alone in the kitchen mishaps. Enter Ashley, she beamed with pride as she presented her creation, only to see disappointment flicker across the judges' faces. Dysfunctional 45 minutes in the history of this competition. Her unique dish didn't quite turn out as planned, and Chef Ramsay didn't hold back in his critique. Uh, I asked if we can, are you gonna nail this cornbread? And I trusted Ashley and nailing. And guess what? The blame game between Ashley and Taylor ensued, like a chaotic tag team match. That was Taylor's idea. The scene was as messy as their dish, and Chef Ramsay's quips didn't help lighten the mood. Watching both of you work is like chewing gum with a mouthful of nuts. Yeah, right. But how did it taste, though? It's dry, it's crumbly, and out of all those carrots. Seriously, guys, can it get any worse? Cut like frickin' elephant toenails. Who, who cuts it? 
Well, looks like it just did. You know, being in a competition means expecting the unexpected, right? Well, let me tell you about this wild episode on MasterChef Season 3 where three contestants got hit with a twist that left them reeling. So, it all started like any other day in the kitchen. The contestants were jittery but pumped up. Little did they know, the judges had a curveball ready for them. Their mission, cook up a duck dish, a challenge notorious for its tricky cooking times. Cook it too little and it's practically quacking. Cook it too much and it might as well be a rubber duck in a bath. Ryan decided to spice things up with caramelized bananas to complement his duck. Sweet move, right? But he got so fixated on those bananas that he forgot about his duck, turning it into a featherless bird that even a crow wouldn't touch. Dry. Yeah, you may have some crisp on the skin, but bananas? I mean, it's like, is it? Wait, there's more! Samantha took a traditional route, but played fast and loose with her timing. In a panic, she built a tower of dry bread next to her duck, hoping the judges would think it was a fort for their imagination. Spoiler alert, they weren't fooled. For dryness. Then there's Scott, who took the judge's advice to heart, maybe a bit too much. They said baked items were for dessert only. So what does Scott do? He plates up a dessert-looking dish that had the judges scratching their heads like a cat with fleas. It equates to three miniature slices. Where's the rest of it? I honestly got scared. You could cut the tension in the kitchen with a knife as the judges sampled each dish. The contestants stood like statues, hoping their fate wouldn't be as cold as the duck Ryan served up. Bananas. That's what's happened. You've gone banana. Finally, Chef Ramsay dropped the bomb. You could hear a pin drop as he announced the unlucky contestant heading home. I had to leave the master chef kitchen this early. I didn't think my dish was the star of the challenge, but I It was a tough call, but Samantha sadly hung up her apron, knowing her time on the show had turned as stale as her tower of bread. The learning process it is giving me more zeal for, for my passion. But hey, in the world of competitive cooking, one wrong move can send you packing fast faster than you can say undercooked duck. These contestants learned it the hard way. You get the protein and then I get this and <laughs> up. No, it's All right, if there's one chef that stands out from the rest, it's gotta be David. This guy's all about the culinary wizardry, hailing from the fancy world of high-end dining. His dishes, well, they're not just food, they're pure artistry on a plate. All right. I knew that why you wouldn't give it to Brandy. Now, despite his undeniable skills, and trust me, he had plenty, there was a little something extra with David. His fiery, explosive temper. I gave David the toughest basket. <laughs> you don't make a lot of sense, brother. And he wasn't above throwing a bunch of full-blown tantrums whenever the mood struck him either. I'm just saying you don't make sense. Yeah, you heard that right. Tantrums from a grown man. It's worse than your imagination's probably making up. Idiot. <gasps> there was this time when, during a challenge, each chef was given an ingredient chosen by a family member. David off his game, get him so flustered that he cannot come back from it. But for David, you know our man here had a burning, single-minded desire to completely trash the challenge. <laughs> Feeling like the world was against him, he dramatically threatened to walk away from the competition altogether. <laughs> in front of his family, no less. What was he up to here? Get the protein and then I get this and he up. No, it's Brandy, Tenoria, Katie, and Dan, and pretty much all of them, struggled to tolerate David's hostile vibes pretty much all the time. Not at all, come on. It's like, oh, smoke trout and some Asian stuff. Even his former ally, Sean, found himself on his bad side when things inevitably went downhill between the two. It's just, it's a joke. Wow. David ended up earning a title he probably didn't want, the most infamous finalist in the show's history. His unpleasant personality and habit of giving up early didn't earn him any fans. In fact, it cost him whatever respect he had left in the eyes of his fellow cooks. You're gonna get mad like that? That's I am. Right. Now, let's take a trip down the not-so-pleasant memory lane of Season 2. The contestants were battling it out with dessert. So there's Max, thinking he's got this dessert game all figured out. And voila! He proudly shows off his creation, this massive tower of 15 crepes. But the judges? They're just not vibing with his vision. Phone, some espresso, a little cream, some sugar. Ramsay was totally stumped, staring at Max's creation like it was some alien artifact. 
but Max, bless his heart, starts breaking down the layers to explain his masterpiece. Unfortunately, his Tower of Pity collapses like a sad metaphor the moment the judges take a bite. And Aaron, he can't even hold it together and just bursts into laughter. Classic! <laughs> And then there's Joe, always throwing in his thoughts for good measure. Overall, the judges were on the same page. Max's dessert was missing that sweetness factor. It just didn't hit the mark. I don't get a lot of coffee flavor at all. I don't get much of anything aside from the weird texture. Oh man, here's where the drama kicks in. Fans were up in arms, claiming Max was kept around just for the ratings. They were all like, this guy can't cook to save his life? And his attitude? Yikes. But hey, he knew how to stir things up. Give him that. Looks like this viewer right here gets the point. But what's your take on it? Don't forget to share your thoughts with me. And hey, I forgot to mention, if there's any dish that made you squirm from the show, drop a comment and let me know. And if you thought that episode was wild, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to turn on my notifications. And do check out the next video right here. It's gonna blow your mind.